Hi, my name is Barry Beck. I work for the Sage Rod Company and I host trips around the world. Uh, I work for an East Coast travel agency and I am a photographer. I do a lot of fly fishing photography and outdoor photography. Well, the name of my presentation today is Fly Waters Near and Far and if you will, it's a buffet of fishing destinations. And what I'd like to do is enlighten people to the fact that there's lots of different species of fish that we can fish for. Uh, try to get away from the tunnel vision that I just want to fish for trout or I just want to fish for this specific fish. But understand that there's lots of opportunities out there, both near and far. Through the course of a lot of our travels and places like this, people always say, well, where's your favorite place to go? And we don't really have one. I know one uh, in an audience, Kath, uh, somebody asked Kathy, he said, if God came down and said today, Kathy, you could only have one more place to go, where would it be? And she said, I hope you wouldn't do that to me. Uh, there's, there's so many species of fish and so many places to go that some of the things that we'll show you today, I just like to open your eyes to realize that there's a lot of different kinds of fish to fish for. Just a few quick travel trips, uh, tips on top there. And these are things sometimes that you can forget and uh, it's not a good idea to have these kind of things happen about a passport where necessary. We all have to remember that passports can sometimes expire while we're on a trip. That's not a good thing because you're, sometimes they won't even let you in the country. The best thing here is a checklist. If you have a good checklist to go with uh, a well thought out one and make sure you pay attention to it, you, you won't find yourself in trouble. This I think you'll all agree anymore, arrive at the airport early and expect some frustrations. That's just part of travel anymore, especially when uh, we have gate changes, flight cancellations, etc. And this is sometimes where a travel agent can save your day for you. When you get to some place and you've had a flight canceled, you need to go to somebody for some help. They can help you a lot. And we'll start with some place that most people wouldn't think about going fly fishing, and that's in Nashville. There's a species of fish that we fish for down here that we really enjoy that a lot of people, some of them have never even heard of, and it's a hybrid striper. And these fish are wonderful, and it's a fish that I think, Kathy and I are from Pennsylvania, it's a fish I think we will see more of in the Keystone State because unfortunately a lot of our water in the east is getting warmer. And some streams that used to support trout year-round can no longer do that. Some of our high mountain lakes are not supporting trout at all anymore. But the hybrid striper is, is they're introducing it, it's doing very well, and it's a great sport fish on a fly rod. And you only need one fly. You've got a Clouser film, chartreuse and white, you can catch these fish. They hunt in schools just like they do in salt water. They get big just like they do in salt water. And you can have an awful lot of fun with them. You take a nine weight and a, a slow sinking tip line, and you can catch some really big fish down there. And at the same time, go out and enjoy yourself at night. But let's think warm for a couple minutes. Uh, we're going to jump around here a little bit. This is Las Brocas, uh, one of our absolutely favorite saltwater destinations. It offers all kinds of fishing. It's a lot of fun. It's an easy trip down to Caracas. But there's some beautiful pancake flats here. And the island itself is a lot of fun. It's very, very safe. They've got good guides, good fishing. This is the rock behind it. Rokas, as you know, branches rock. A lot of waiting down there. If you get down there in the fall, you can catch some huge bonefish. I mean, double ditch of fish. And you really need one fly and have some gummy minnow because there are acres of bait there in the fall with the high tides. There's also some decent tarpon fishing down there, but this is a pretty average bonefish in Rokas. If somebody came to me today and said, listen, I really, I've never caught a bonefish, never caught a tarpon, I'd love to hunt permit, my very first choice would be Belize. That's the place to go. From Belize City down to Punta Allen, Placencia, out to the Turnip Islands and those areas, there are just numerous opportunities to catch all three species and to get a Grand Slam. The Grand Slam is a bonefish, a tarpon, and a permit. And if you get real lucky and you get a look with that, you get a super slam. There are probably more slams caught in Belize than anywhere else in the world. And you go down there with one thought in mind, at least I do, and that's to catch a permit. And there's just something about that fish. When I see that, I get as nervous as the guide. I've passed a hundred permits, and I've been very blessed to catch a good number of them. But it doesn't matter. Every time I see that, my hand starts to shake a little bit, and I get a little nervous. But again, lots of tarpon in Belize of all sizes. These are good fish that love to jump. This is 12 weight rod country right here. This is Belize City, and you're literally fishing 
right off the shore. When you catch a tarpon and jump in front of the city walls itself, it's pretty cool. But there's so much water down there to explore. You get out close to the Turnip Island area, you've got beautiful, beautiful flats. There's tarpon out there as well. Some really big fish. This is called Miami Beach. I just want to make sure you don't like catch your fish once in a while too. Let's leave salt water. We're going to sneak off and we're going to run down to Argentina. This truly is the Patagonia region. It's truly what I think of as the, um, the American West, but without the people. There's big rivers, small rivers. You can end up fishing small flies to sipping fish and lagoons like that. You can throw big streamers and you can catch some really, really nice fish. But the nice part is on most of these waters, they're not very crowded at all. <laughs> the Maya is a very long river system that offers some beautiful fish like this. I mean, that's a very, very handsome fish and lots of smiles and happy faces. But we'll come back to the American West, our favorite river. It's a river that uh, obviously is the big horn. They get caddis hatches there that are absolutely unbelievable. And rising fish, when the flies are on the water, these fish will come to the surface and you can really, really have a good time. We travel just a little bit north here. We'll go up to Maine. It's never been very, very crowded. We've always had a very good time, but we thought we'd try something new a couple years ago. And we, we'd like, we've always wanted to catch a tuna. But on this one day, one year, we got there when the tuna showed up and there wasn't a boat on the flats anywhere. But there were a lot of tuna. That's a 16 weight rod. You don't cast it, you sort of launch it. We chased these fish around, finally got in a casting position where Kathy could get a shot at the fish. She hooked the fish. We played the fish for an hour. And we eventually landed the fish. But, you know, a fish like that, that the uh, ounce for ounce, I don't think we've ever fought anything, or I saw anything that fought as hard as that blue pin. Alaska. Not that far away, we call it the last frontier. Uh, it, it certainly is, and in some aspects, there's some wild country up there. There's some bears. It's something that Kathy and I have enjoyed for 31 years. We've been photographing grizzlies. We saw a lot of grizzly photography. Katmai itself is a big park, offers all kinds of fishing for rainbow trout. You can go south into the Bristol Bay area, and you can catch all kinds of Pacific salmon if you're there at the right time of the year. August for the Sobers, July for the Fresh Chums, uh, late June for the Kings. It's, it's an incredible fishery. You just have to plan your trip, and that's where Travel Agent comes in and can help you so much. But these kind of fish, I mean, they're priceless. I mean, how do you put a price on a fish that's as wild as that? Always people will ask us, well, what kind of clothes should we bring? Well, let's give you a good example. This is July, when it stays light almost 24 hours a day. You see the guides in a t-shirt in a canoe. This is two days later. That's what weather can do in Alaska. It just changes. So you, you go with lots of warm clothes and always think that you can always take things off. But if you don't have them to add on, you'll regret it. So we've got dry one day in a t-shirt, a couple days later with gloves, parka, cloth, and everything to try to keep Kathy warm. But truly Alaska is more than just the fishing. It's just being there. It's the bears, it's the scenery. But again, Wild country, float plane will take you to where the fishing is. If you've never been to New Zealand, gosh, put it on your bucket list. If you, uh, if you like to hunt big trout, it truly is the place, the best place in the world to hunt them. And that's what the Kiwi guides do. They, whether it's the North Island or the South Island, they're probably the most serious trout fishing guides I've ever been around. The guides will go far ahead of you and locate the fish first. You'll see them climb trees, hang over banks, hang from ropes, do all kinds of things to find you a fish. And then they'll push you in position to make a cast to it. They, they describe their water as clear as, as the air, and it really is gin clear. And it's truly, you find the fish first, and your first cast is usually the most important cast. But the Kiwi guides are, I'm telling you, they are serious, serious <laughs> guides. They'll push you into some wonderful fish. You can see how clear this river is here. Fly-ins uh, can be pricey in New Zealand, but they can take you to rivers where the, or the ordinary angler might never see. And into the backcountry and rivers like this where there are some huge fish and where you can have total solitude and truly that. This was the last day a couple years ago, and this is actually a little spring creek that goes down into a larger river. We fished for seven hours, never saw a fish. 
went up this little spring creek, and this was the first fish that we saw. This was the second fish that we saw. We had two. That's the nicest brown trout that we've ever had, Kathy's caught, in New Zealand on a dry fly. That fish weighed almost 13 pounds. The neat thing is that you've got Marriott's here that can help you get to some place. I work for a travel agency. I meet people traveling that try to do some of these trips on their own, and some of them work out fine. But I've seen the difference between a good trip and a bad trip, basically because they had somebody help them get there, help them make their plans, have them prepared. There's no fly shops out here. If you run out of something, there's no place to go buy anything. So if you've got a shop, a good tackle shop, that can get you outfitted and help you get to where you're going, and help you have a successful trip, it makes all the difference in the world. Well, we're coming to an end, but again, there's all kinds of fish to, to uh, the fish for with your fly rod and a great tackle shop here to help you. Thank you very much. Kathy and I do the rest of the